In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your footage go from looking like this as a raw S-log file to this color graded, brought back to life in Final Cut Pro. When I'm shooting my videos, I mostly shoot in S-Log3 or D-Log, depending on what kind of camera that I'm using and what kind of footage it is that I'm shooting. Because when I started shooting videos, one of the things that I always heard was that you have to shoot in log. It's the best dynamic range, it provides the best image quality and all that stuff. But if you don't know how to work with log footage, it's gonna be very hard for you to get a good looking image coming out of your camera. And the more that I'm shooting videos for YouTube, I kind of realized that not everything has to be shot in log because most of the time shooting in a built-in picture profile is gonna be more than sufficient for the things that you do on YouTube. But when you're doing client work and when you're doing more serious stuff that you wanna preserve the details in the shot that you're taking, that is where you want to use log, at least that is in my case. But for this video, I want to show you how I bring back my log footage to looking like something that I want to use in my videos. One of the things that I've done to my footage for a very long time is applying my personal LUT to all my S-Log and D-Log footage because I created a lot to be able to streamline my own workflow. So if you're not interested in learning how you would bring back the actual look and instead just want to have the quick workaround, then I do have a link to my LUT down below. But if you want to see how everything is done, then stay, stay with me here and uh, grab a cup of coffee because I'm going to show you. Looking at this shot, for example, you can see that it looks very washed out. And looking at the vector scopes, we are somewhere in between 20 and 75 on the waveforms. And what I want to do is that I want to start out by grabbing Color Finale Pro. And the reason that I'm using Color Finale is just because I like it. I think that the user interface is very intuitive. It's super easy to use and it makes things easy when it comes to color grading. I'm going to drop a link down below to that as well if you want to buy that and try it out. Looking at the right hand side, you have a bunch of different sliders that you can choose from, but I'm going to jump in straight to the layers panel. So I'm going to press edit layers and here I'm going to start out by choosing the color wheels. Here you can see that we have lift gamma in game, which is basically shadows, midtones, and highlights. The first thing that I usually do is that I drag down the lift to make sure that we hit the bottom on the zero right here. And then I drag up the gain so we get back a little bit of pop into the image. And then I adjust the gamma ever so slightly. Don't need to pull it that much, but we can drag it down to somewhere around here. I think that this looks good. And then we can increase the gain a little bit so that we don't hit the ceiling, as you can see right here. And now I'm going to bring back a little bit of saturation that we have in the shot. So I'm going to drag the saturation on the right hand side, drag it up. Let's see, I think that that looks pretty good. And we are going to increase the saturations in the highlights. We are going to create another color wheel and we are going to decrease the highlights ever so slightly so that we come down a little bit and then increase saturation and drag down the midtones, bring up the blacks just a little bit. And here we go. Looking at the before and after, it's a huge, huge difference. This looks very washed out and this brings back all the colors and all the contrast to life. But what I want to do is that I want to give this more life. I want to give it a little bit more color and a little bit more pop. So what I want to do now is that I want to choose the six vectors and then I'm going to go to the yellow and then drag this a little bit towards the orange. Not much, just ever so slightly then increase the saturation a little bit. And then we're gonna to go to the blue and drag it a little bit towards the teal. And there we go. And go to the teal, drag it towards the blue a little bit. And we're gonna 
increase the luminosity. This is where the color grading aspect comes in. So now that I feel satisfied with this, I can insert another color wheels. And here I want to create a mask on this. So as you can see here, when I press this button, it pops up a little bit of masking icon right here. And then I'm going to choose the circular or ellipse. And then we get this nice ellipse shape. So we're going to create a mask and then we're going to drag this out so that it covers the entire sky. There we go. And drag it up like that. And now we're going to go back to our color wheels. And the cool thing here is that from this point, we can adjust basically everything. So I want to make sure that the sky is a little bit towards the red and has a little bit more of the pinkish glow, but I don't want to make it too much, but I think that this looks pretty cool. And then I want to drag the midtones a little bit towards the blue. Not too much. There. And we're going to increase the brightness. Oh, I'm just joking. And we are going to decrease the shadows a little bit. There we go. And see what if we can drag down the midtones and then go back to our color wheels down below and ever so slightly increase the brightness. There we go. And now I want to create another color wheels and do the same thing where we just add a mask on top of this and we are going to choose the ellipse and we are going to choose feathering 100 and we're going to drag this out and make sure that we cover the entire ocean this time around. So we're just going to make two different masks basically. And now we're going to jump back and see what happens if we drag this down. Okay, that was way too low. We don't want to add in too much of a contrast. So I'm going to adjust the colors and make it look a little bit more like... I think the, the orangey look is very good. And then we're going to drag the mid-tones towards the... Tealish, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And the highlights. Towards blue. Before and after, subtle changes, but I do like it. Maybe we can adjust the. Yeah, there we go. This is good. So, look at this shot right now. Here is the before. And this is the after. If you're playing it back, it looks incredibly vivid and very much like golden, the way that I want it to look like. And looking at the vector scope, you can see that we are not going down crushing the blacks and we are not crushing the highlights either. So you gotta make sure that stay within zero to approximately 115 whenever you are doing these kind of color grading in Final Cut Pro. This is the way that I do it. And if you want to show the video scopes, you go into view and then show in viewer and then video scopes. So being able to use the same kind of technique on all my footage is something that definitely has streamlined my entire workflow. And I really like that doing it this way gives me a very good control of how the footage is coming out and the final result that I'm posting online. Just for the sake of this video, I'm gonna jump into this drone shot as well. Uh, shot in the morning with the Mavic 3 in it, and it looks very dull, very boring, very washed out. The only thing that you can see is basically the redness in the crane over here on the left-hand side. But we're gonna drag Color Finale over to this, and then we are going to jump into the layers and do the exact same thing as we did in the previous ones.
And uh, looking at the before and after, this one looks like before. And this is the after. This is the way that I color grade my videos and the way that I've learned to give my videos life, basically. And I'm not saying that this is the correct way or that this is the standard way or this is the way that everyone should do it. This is just the way that I do it. And I think this works great. So I really hope that you can apply this to your own videos as well. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and all that good stuff. I'm going to post some uh, links here. If you um, want to try out Color Finale Pro, highly recommend it. There's a link down below. Also, if you want to just skip all of the time consuming stuff and just buy my lot, there's a link to that down below as well. Thank you for watching. Peter Vance with you then. Say goodbye.